Hello. Hi, Seth. Hi, Mary. Tesla and Jamie got together. Yes, <laughs> your 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 surrogate you and and Jamie are are an item now. Did you see? Did you see how he kissed her? Yes, he, he kissed. Yes, you're right. He did. <laughs> or she kind of kissed him. I don't know. They kissed. Whatever. Saliva was exchanged. That's all that matters. And I I knew you were going to be excited about this, not just because that that Zeppelin is your surrogate you, and also does I still I think seem in many ways very much like you. Is that I know for some reason I know that. Uh, the Allison really likes Zeppelin. You really like Zeppelin. There's something there. Totally. That 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 women are really liking Zeppelin, and I'm not sure why that is. Do you do you not like Zeppelin stuff? No, no, I don't dislike. No, I have no, I I I have no objection to Zeppelin. <laughs> I just don't, you know. She's just sort of there for me. I don't. Want, I, I don't wait. No, that sounds right because it sounds like I then you know call her when I when I when I need to vent. No, it's not that she's there for me. <laughs> and to me, she just seems like. She's just there. I have no feelings either way towards Zeppelin. Wait, wait. First of all, you just said that she reminds me more. Or <laughs> oh, wait a second. More of me. <laughs> all right. And then you're like, and she's just kind of there. Yeah. So what's your point? No, I, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, uh. But anyway. I dug um, a hole for myself here. <laughs> but that's interesting to me because. You know, like, I don't think necessarily every girl out there, like, identifies with Zeppelin. Like, I think she's definitely, like, a me and Allison kind of girl. But it is <laughs> it is sort of, like, I think it's what girls like us fear is that, like, we think girls like that are awesome. But, like, dudes just don't get it. And, like, you know, the whole thing with, like, her and Karma and Karma trying to girl her up, you always want that to not be necessary. But, like, God, is it? Like, do girls just have to girl up in order to get... Paid attention and noticed. And but but not when you just say there. when you say that you think that girl quote quote I'm doing the fingers thing quote girls like <laughs> that are awesome. What do you mean? What is, what kind? What is a girl like that? What is it about she's, Zeppelin that makes her a girl like that? She's smart and funny and like no BS and kind of um she she she's authentic. Like she just is who she is. Like she doesn't, she doesn't seem particularly smart to me. Really? No. Maybe just because she talks fast, I think she's smart. <laughs> she's, and she wears glasses. <laughs> she has brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I said, I actually have no problem with Zeppelin. I think she's perfectly no. fine, but I just don't feel this great enthusiasm. And I try because, you know, I respect you and, and Allison, and I, and I want to like, okay, this is, you're right. That they're, they got to be right. This has got to be the character, but just not happening for me. I think I have to like reevaluate my entire life right now. <laughs> My entire approach towards dudes and how I am, and you've really given me something to chew on here. So. Wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> I don't want to have any life reevaluation happening because of this conversation. <laughs> I'm not saying like I'm not I'm not evaluating her like a, as a possible candidate for marriage or anything like that. I'm just looking at her as a person on a show, and it's just like when I watch those scenes with her, I just don't really. It's like I want to see a scene with somebody else. I just don't care what's okay. going on with her at that point. Wow. Wow. I guess it's, you know how everybody just wants to see themselves like represented on TV. Like, I think that me and Allison are just like, I'm like her. I'm oh. like a little dirty, but like, you know. Now this I'm... conversation has, t has turned out to make it seem like I don't like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, this is terrible. Let's, yeah, we'll just move away from this. You know what's because the, the weird thing is, that in real life, clearly Zeppelin would be the most appealing person on that show. But so why is she not appealing to me as a fictional character? Oh, so that's interesting. Okay. So you, you just kind of climbed out of that hole. <laughs> you know, in real life, you'd hang with her. It's just that, like, whatever scenes she's in aren't, aren't doing it for Yeah, her. that's entirely true. It's like we were talking about this on two different planes. Yeah, if, if these okay. people were all real, Zeppelin would be the one that I want to, like, hang out with. But on okay. the show, I just don't care. I just like I just want to know what's going on with like Tommy's drunk brother or something like. Yeah, that. yeah. But dude, instant star aside, we have a Degrassi marathon going on this weekend, and yeah. guess whose face we've been seeing on our air that we haven't seen? Well, I guess we have been seeing it because of reruns and all that, but we haven't seen his updated face in a while. <laughs> you, 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 you lost me completely. Oh, <laughs> just tell me who it is. I don't know. <laughs> Ryan Cooley. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, him. <laughs> oh, that guy. 
<laughs> Ryan JT Cooley, who's popped back up in the in the Ultimate Cast Party, as you said, and uh, totally. People... And I think he'll be on even more next weekend. And it's it's cool because people still ask for like podcasts with him, right. and I I always kind of like you know I don't think that's really gonna happen, but here we are, about to podcast with him because we finally have an excuse. So let's call him up right now. Okay. Hello. Hello, Ryan Cooley. Hey. Hey, it's MarianSethFernand.com. How are you? We're good. How are you? I'm not bad. Long time no talk. Seriously. I just, <laughs> um, we get so much mail, like, when are you doing another podcast with Ryan Cooley? And, like, people oh, yeah? are still so obsessed with you, and they miss JT so much. And, I mean, like, a, and a lot of kids are kind of just coming to Degrassi now because they're, like, just watching reruns or, you know, they're younger and, like, right, starting right. to be allowed to watch it and stuff. So, Which so, is amazing because, you know, I thought that I would just die and then everybody would forget about me. Oh, no. my God. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is that, I mean, that's what they accomplished by killing such a, a character, like, a beloved character is that it was a real death. Like, it wasn't just, like, you know, a red shirt goes away. <laughs> it was yeah. like a Jedi Knight, actually, that by killing you, they've, they've immortalized you forever now. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Which is why I want to do, you know, more of these, uh, these interviews and these, uh, these appearances, you know. I just did the, the promotion at Degrassi for the countdown. Yep. And, you know, it was so much fun, you know, and that's why I want to do more of those, because I, I understand that, that everybody, uh, you know, wants to, wants to get the scoop, you know see what i'm doing and i want to be able to to, to talk to the to the fans and and, uh, and all the people so totally so what are you doing <laughs> what's up brian cooley well you know i'm just hanging i'm just <laughs> hanging i just finished my uh second year at the university of toronto uh-huh so i've been doing that like pretty much full time like that takes up all of my time from september to you know middle of may because oh. i have a full workload like i have a full school schedule yeah, totally. That I that I uh, that I do. So that's been that's been pretty much taken up most of my time. So and isn't it also when you're an acting student, it's not just like schoolwork and blah blah blah, but it's also like rehearsals for whatever productions you guys are doing. Yeah, and... yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we did. You know, we'll do like six or seven productions in a in a school year, which is a lot. Oh, and wow. so we're we're in rehearsals all the time. Uh, on top of my other subjects, like I do history as well and political science. Right. Oh wow. School. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty so, busy. So you're doing like a play like every month and a half? Yeah, we do a lot of plays and we do different, different eras. Like we'll do a Greek tragedy and then uh, we did a, a play by Tennessee Williams and, you know, we, we we cover a pretty broad spectrum. And then on the outside, I actually did a play uh, like an independent thing apart from school uh, back in January on my own. Really? Uh, so so I like was, that was pretty full schedule. <laughs> you were just like, you know, I've got way too much free time. I think I'll just take another <laughs> play. <laughs> so what are some of the, of the, during the last two years, what are some of your favorite roles that you've gotten to play? Um, well, the, the, uh, the Tennessee Williams was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, and I also did a play um, by a playwright who is very well known, uh, at least here in Toronto and Canada. His name is Daniel McIver. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I did a play uh, by him called Cul de Sac, and I was the the lead role of character called Leonard, and it was basically a story about Leonard's death, and oh. how which is uh, for some reason I'm drawn to these death storylines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the whole premise of the play is that he's died, and then his neighbors get together in this cul de sac, and we tell the story of his death. So, uh, you know, it, it sounds like a downer piece, but it was actually a comedy. So. It was it was a lot of fun, yeah. And I actually I was lucky enough to uh, win best actor at the uh, University of Toronto Drama Awards. For oh that. my God! Nice. That's nice. Uh, so I was very proud of that, and I and I had a lot of fun doing that. That's huge! Congratulations. Thank you. That's yeah, fantastic. and it was it was a real honor. You know, they did the whole award ceremony. I had to go up and make a speech, and it was all <laughs> it was all very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so for people out there, because I know a lot of people listen, or you know, they're, like, they're about to go to college, and a lot of them are, are thinking about going to drama school or becoming actors. Aside from being really busy, which it obviously is, like, what is it like to be a drama student? How is it different than just being a regular student who's in college and studying English or something? Um, well, there's a lot of similarities and, and some differences. I mean, the main differences are that we have to take classes like movement class. 
mm-hmm. and like and voice class, which is you know it's very practical, it's very hands on, and it's not just we never like write down you know tests or do anything like that. It's very like we do uh, yoga work, and we do breathing exercises, and to get in touch with our instrument, our our body, which is our instrument. So I mean it's it's kind of abstract in that way, apart from people who are doing like an English major. And what else? Like we have to memorize monologues and things, which I guess isn't so different because you have to memorize, you know, facts and things. I guess if you're in science. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But it's just the the biggest difference is I think is that you can't skip class. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Oh wow. Right. Because if you skip any classes in in the theater courses, like you you fall so far behind. I mean, if you miss one day, you've missed a lot. Wow. And now that is true. I mean, of course that is true to say for say a history lecture, but you can catch up. You know, they put the lecture things on online, and then you can catch up, right? Right. Um, but this is just this is totally physical. It's hands-on, practical work. So if you miss out, then you can't just say you can't just ask one of your classmates. You know, what do we do? Because it's very personal work. Wow. So like the rule, at least from my school, is that if you miss three classes, you're out. You get kicked out. Right. <laughs> wow. I would imagine, like, is some of it kind of like therapy? Like, are you working out some issues sometimes? It's not. It's not therapy. It's just. It's just. It's just learning how to use your your instrument, which I say is is your body. It's just getting in touch with your with yourself. You know, a lot of us are so disconnected from our from our bodies. It's all just our minds, just working, racing through life. You know, if you're if you're in business, it's just you know work, 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 and you don't actually get time to think about your actual body. And I think that's why a lot of people get sick. And right. they need to get the therapy. Um, so it's I, they always say that it's it's not really like therapy. It shouldn't be like that. It should be exploring. It's you're exploring yourself and your expression. That's how I look at it, at least. Right. Totally. You just made me totally sit up straight in my chair and be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And be less in my but brain. We do we do do like uh, exercise work, you know, because in order to be a good stage actor, a good actor in general, like you have to be fit. You have to be you have to be uh, physically active. So we do a lot of exercise, a lot of uh, physical work, you know, working out and things like that. Now, is is the stereotype true? Like, is there a lot of drama between the drama students? <laughs> like, do they we, have... We of... are not... We are a very dramatic bunch. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Like, we go out, uh, you know, at the end of the school year uh, to a pub or something, and we're like the loudest group there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and somebody might just break out with like a Shakespeare monologue if they <laughs> feel like they need to. <laughs> but there's not a lot of drama between us, you know. We all we're a very tight group. Oh, that's good. Have you done yeah. have you done a musical yet? Cuz well here, let me say this. Cuz when I was in college, I had a lot of friends who were in the drama program. And I yeah. learned that every actor, no matter who it is, and this is obviously a sweeping stereotype, but hey, that's what I'm here for. Every hey. actor, who no matter who it was, all they really wanted to do was song and dance stuff it could have been like be robert de niro and 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 that's what they wanted to do it would be fun i haven't i did a musical when i was uh eight years old uh-huh and it was my very first acting gig i ever had and it was on stage uh in my hometown in orangeville which is north of toronto and it was called jacob tutu meets the hooded fang <laughs> Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. That was great. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that with Patty Lapone. Piece. That was fantastic. I think it was the first and last time it was produced. No. <laughs> and and uh, I played Jacob. And it was a musical, and that was my only musical experience. But I really, I would love to do a, a musical. That would be fun. I would be totally into that. I like to sing. Yeah. I like to dance. I don't know if you've ever seen the video of me and Sarah dancing in a dressing room on my last day of set. No. Aww. You can clearly see that we like to sing and dance. <laughs> So how was it seeing those guys again for the um, cast party uh, shoot? The, oh, the the, the uh, marathon party. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. It was uh, it was amazing. Like when uh, I went in, it was like it was totally surreal because it just was like a regular day at set. We yeah. shot for you know ten hours. It was a full day, and I went in in the morning at eight a.m. and I got you know the breakfast and I did the hair and the makeup and everything. We went on set and it was like a it was like a regular day. It was totally surreal. It was it was it was odd because I I was on the show for since like the very beginning. Like at first it was uh, Miriam, Jake, Cassie, and myself day one. Yeah. And we were on the show for you know at least I was for six years. Of course they're still doing it. 
And, you know, so often we have the, the new kids coming in, always. You know, every season we had a new kid coming in. And, you know, it, was, it, it must have felt a little bit awkward for them. They don't really know anybody. They kind of feel like an outsider. And I, and I felt like I got to sort of experience that. Because <laughs> I felt like an outsider coming in and being like, oh, hi, guys. <laughs> like, you know, not really in the loop, not really knowing what's going on. There's some new faces there that I don't know. And uh, it was kind of like that, so it was really weird. But that went away quickly as the day went on, and we just got to hang out, you know, in between in between the shots and catch up. And it was it was a lot of fun. I really really enjoyed myself. It was amazing. Yeah, I was gonna say it must kind of it must like a little bit suck that like oh great it's gonna be like a big reunion and everybody's gonna be there and we're gonna be working all day. <laughs> yeah, and that's like like I say like you know it's fun at first reunion haha we're all happy hugging each other at the beginning of the day and then it's like get to set now we have to shoot. <laughs> Stop talking, you know we're trying to you know talk on set and everybody's having a good time and like shut up let's go we're gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like oh yes okay I remember this I know how to do this now. Was that the first time you'd been back to the set since you left, or? Yeah, that actually was. Oh man. First time. I mean, I was. I last time I was on set, like I think it was two years ago. I don't remember. Um, but like, it, it's been that long, and that was my first time back on set. Wow. Yeah. I Had... mean, I always say that I want to come and visit, but I can never uh, get the time during my school year. Yeah, I was gonna say. It sounds like you're pretty busy. Like. Do you even have time to watch the show, or like, have you tried to catch a couple episodes and catch up on what's going on? Oh yeah, or... I've seen episodes. I've seen episodes. I mean, I haven't seen too many episodes. Yeah, because I'm kind of out of the loop. I don't. I don't. I haven't been able to see too many. Yeah, yeah. To be honest. Don't tell anybody I told you this, but everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> they all get stabbed in the back at parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make a good what if mini. It's just like. <laughs> One I guess yeah, kind of a gruesome one, but, uh, the rated R version. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you this because last time we talked to you, I remember I asked you who your favorite actor was, and you said it was Harrison Ford, and you said you were really excited to see the new Indiana Jones movie, which is now coming. Yeah. Out. So what yeah, did you, what did you I, saw, think? I saw it uh, like two weeks ago, and and I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it, I think that um, it wasn't getting a lot of uh, rave reviews. I mean, the people I was talking to said, you know, it was just a little bit too much. They didn't like it. But I always said, you know, people, they, they create these huge high expectations because of like, oh, it's Indiana Jones. The other movies were so good. You know, this one's got to be great. So they go in there with these huge, huge high expectations, and then and nothing's going to live up to that. Right. Yeah. You know, like you can't you can't go in there being like this has to be the best movie ever you know right. it's not going to be that it's indiana jones it's going to give you a really good time it's going to be some awesome action some amazing sequences and there were that's just what it delivered and i thought it was good and uh my girlfriend her name is julie uh, she hadn't really seen any indiana jones so we uh, so we rented all the three of them watched uh -huh. them all nice. and then we went to go see the fourth one right. which uh -huh. i think a lot of people did right and uh and she liked it too, you know. It was good. It was good. So I don't know. I thought it was good. Maybe I'm a bit biased. I really like Harrison Ford, uh, and I thought the Child of Buck was great. So I enjoyed it. Very nice. <gasps> Shia. All right. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for catching up with us, Ryan Cooley. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. We miss you so much, and hopefully there will be another opportunity at some point to catch up with you again. I'm another always available to talk. <laughs> All right. Good luck with the rest. Of, well, I guess you're done with school for this year, but good luck with next year and have a great summer. And I will do. I will do. See ya. Okay. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, that was fun. Good old Ryan Cooley. Good to catch up with an old friend. So next week is the Instant Star finale. Yeah. That's the big. It. The big. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. So we'll be back to Instant Star podcast next week, barring an act of God. I hate. You know. I don't want to jinx us, but. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> yes, we've got two more people we need to talk to, but I feel yeah. confident that we can do it. I think so. I think we I can. Think, everybody keep your fingers crossed. Because we need to know who Alex says smells the best. <gasps> totally. Oh, my God, I can't wait. All right. Talk to you next week, Sether. See you, Mary. Have a good weekend. Way to podcast. Way to podcast, Mary. Okay. Bye. <laughs>